Hi everyone, I'm Kelly and in today's video we're going to be using uh, brush pens to draw with. I have drawn a little quail kind of perched on a fence post and we're going to be doing some work with a black paint pen. This is a, a brush pen by Kuritake. It's a nice flexible pen. So we'll do some ink work and then we'll go back and add color with some water-based brush pens. And uh, I think you'll like this one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. But for now, I'm going to do the ink work. And I like these pens from Kiritake because as you'll see, they're nice and, and flexible and you can get quite a nice uh, line with these. And I'm not going to outline everything um, like it was solid. I'm, I'm going to have some fun with uh, varying line weight. And I like this because you can have, um, you can create texture just by varying the weight. And this is the Kiritake um, AI liner. And uh, it's kind of a new pen for me. So I've been having a lot of fun with it. And we haven't done a lot with brush pens uh, recently, so I thought it was a good opportunity to uh, practice our brush strokes and, and kind of have some fun. And you can do as much outlining as you want. You can do as little. You don't have to do any outlining. You could just go straight in with color. And um, quails have all of these kind of overlapping feathers um, on their chest and belly and I'm not going to put all of those in. I, I just think it um, it's kind of too much for the, the style that I'm doing. So I'm just going to be kind of putting them in here and there um, just to you know give the impression that there are. As I work down I'm going to make the feathers a, a little bit darker um, by putting more pressure on the pen. I just like this style. I think it's interesting. One thing you do need to remember with brush pens is that when you're working on watercolor paper, which is what I'm doing, as opposed to um, a smoother paper, these pens can take a little bit longer to dry. So you just want to be kind of aware of that. I've got quite a lot of detail going on varying my line weight of things. You can go back over your lines. Nobody says you can't. Just be mindful of where your hand is so that you don't uh, end up with um, smudging everything. And I am taking some license uh, with this drawing, but I think that's what makes it fun. We need to let this dry for a couple of minutes and then um, I'll go over and I'll erase all of my uh, extraneous pencil lines and then we can get started with the color. So I'm gonna let this dry and I will be right back. I've gone ahead and I've erased all of the uh, pencil lines and um, in a couple of spots a few of my lines uh, were a little bit lighter than I had wanted so I just went ahead and I darkened them up and then I thickened a couple of lines for some added interest. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my Kiritake Real Brush Pens and these are great because they are flexible like a regular paintbrush and uh, I, I really like them. So I just have a small selection of colors and I'll put um, a list of them in the description box below. I'll also give you a link um, if you want to just uh, transfer uh, a line drawing to your paper so that way you don't have to worry about drawing it as well. I have a small watercolor brush. This is about a size four and I have some clean water because I'm going to uh, dissolve the pigment. I have a blue gray color and I'm going to use that on um, the back of the head and then the chest and I'm just going to start uh, kind of laying down the color. And you see as I as I move this brush, and if you can see it, it, it spreads out and it, uh, it creates uh, kind of the same textures you'd get with a regular brush pen. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to dissolve that color and spread it around a bit with some clean water. And because this is mixed media paper, I can 
I can do this without worrying about my paper buckling and making kind of a mess. I think it's all really fun and it it can soften the color. If you notice I'm I added some color to my paper and now I'm just using my brush to kind of blend it out. You can soften it as much as you want, as little. It just entirely depends on you. And since this is, it's got ink, it kind of is a stylized interpretation of uh, a quail. And uh, he has this kind of collar of very dark uh, feathers. They're almost black, but I'm not gonna use black. I'm going to use um, some dark, some dark gray, because I, I want contrast. I want you to see all these feathers. Today is a very nice day where I am, and there's a lot of uh, yard work going on in my neighborhood today, so you may occasionally hear that. I'm gonna darken up around the eye. And if anything goes wrong, and there's like all these white feathers around here, if I lose any of them and I want to put them back, I have a white acrylic paint pen with a very fine tip that I can use to put them, put it back. And these feathers here are very, very dark. A lot of times when I work with brush pens, I, I don't fill things in completely. I leave white space and I have, I have kind of fun with things. You can use these to have, to add your lines. And then he has some kind of brown feathers. And although this says brown, it, it's more like a, kind of reminds me of, um, burnt sienna paint. It's kind of fun that way. And in between switching colors, I'll rinse my brush off uh, and then I'll, I'll dissolve it. And you can see this is a very nice orangey brown. It's a very fun color. He's also got some of that kind of right here. So I'm going to just put some down on my paper and then I'm going to just dissolve it all around. And I always find that the uh, adding color part to drawings goes so much faster than uh, anything else. And this is, I put a lot of pigment down, so I'm actually going to get rid of some of it by just taking my clean brush and kind of pulling it away. I'm also going to add a little bit of the gray at the bottom and on the sides here just to darken that up a little bit. And you see if you if you're familiar with watercolors you see I'm using a lot of the same techniques you use in watercolor. Drop color in, soften color. So it's fun you know you can apply the skills that you know to other other forms and I'm going to kind of move this color all around so I'm going to add some gray to the sides of his legs and then soften soften that up and he has um, a wider band of feathers right here than uh, normal so that area is is dry so i am going to just go back in with that liner pen that i use and, and darken these up a bit and that's the nice thing you know you can go back in and darken things up and i need to color his beak so i'm only going to color one side of it with the dark gray and then I will drag the color upwards and while it's still damp I can make it a little bit darker. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wet the entire area because I want color to move. Now you have to be careful that your ink lines have actually dried otherwise they will spread around a bit. And I have some, I have a couple of different greens because I noticed the uh, 
there's kind of like mossy bits and stuff on the um, post here. It's not just gray or just brown. It's got all kinds of texture and things going on. And I'm just gonna drop color in here and there just to add some interest to this. And I might smooth it out a little bit just to speed up the process of colors blending. And I might add a little brown. This is light brown, which is kind of a yellowy color, but that's all right. It'll, it'll be nice. I think one thing I'll do, I'll add a little bit of darker color kind of over here just to help round him out a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of that yellow right in here. And you can add as much detail as you want. You know, I may add, I'll add a little bit of the dark gray underneath because he's got darker feathers on his tail. You know, you can add a little bit of the gray on the side, indicate part of his, part of his wing over here. But they have a fun and quick way of using brush pens to draw. I hope you give this a try. If you do, please share your work on Instagram and tag it tutorials with Kelly so that I'll be able to see it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. And don't forget to click the little bell icon. So I will see you in our next video. Bye.